All right, so thank everybody for coming to this Q and A. We're gonna be talking about Wizard, um, and why, in my opinion, I think is the class that can do the most damage out of all the out of all the classes, um, just in general, really. Um, so I'm gonna go with the first question I got on the Saraha. Uh, this person went to uh, an event. They're now level five. Uh, they only played the class a little bit, uh, only a few times. So they wanted to get some uh, introspection on how to make a good spell list. So my first uh, thing I would say for making a good wizard spell list, um, at level five, I would stick with, uh, I would grab either one uh, kill combo um, kill combos are the certain spells that when X person is in a state, that X person dies. So things like Icy Blast, Shatter, or uh, Hold Person, or a Spell Ball that would uh, make them stopped or freeze, and use Drag Below, which is when X player is stopped, that player then dies. And then, then I would go with, I personally really like uh, Per Life Abilities. I really think per life abilities is what makes wizard extremely strong because they can take so many and most of the per lives that you do get are so strong. Um, so a spell list that goes off of your kill combos and you have per life abilities that you can use um, a lot, even uh, every time that you die, that way you can keep up your DPS throughout the entire battle game. Also, ambulant is ambulant is always good to have. Um, the next question is from Sefton. How wizard? All right. So, essentially, uh, like I said before, I think wizard is the class that can do most of the DPS out of most most of the um, out of all the classes in the game, purely because one, you're the only class that has kill combo verbal spells. Um, like I said, you could put person in X state, and that person then dies, which is extremely useful. Um, you get a lot of per-life abilities, which are highly effective with crowd control and also taking out a lot of enemies. Um, you also have three chargeable spells that are arguably extremely strong. Um, one of them is wounding. Uh, wounding allows you to just straight straight up take a limb from another player, which is really strong of your choosing. Um, Dispel Magic. Dispel Magic is by far one of the best spells in the game, and you can charge that times three. And you could pretty much put a nice, like, you could stop any druid or any person with enchantments just right out of their tracks and just get rid of everything that they have. And also Shove. Uh, shove, though it is like a really simple spell, um, combine that with, say, Wounding, and you could take almost any player out of the game. You can take away one of their legs with Wounding, and then you can shove them into a corner. And they're pretty much left there to sit. Uh, Wizard also gets uh, the majority of the spell balls that are available in the game. Uh, should I pull it up right here? Uh, the rule book. The first one is Force Bolts. Force Bolts are a basic uh, uh, spell ball that every caster except for uh, Bard, well, half the casters get, uh, only Druid and Wizard gets. Force Bolt just deals a wound uh, straight up. And you also get um, Lightning Bolt, Ice Ball, and Tangle Ball, Suppression Bolt, uh, Sphere of Annihilation, Phase, Fireball. Um, these, these spell balls are extremely good in almost every situation. Uh, Zedrum acts what my favorite or least favorite spells are. Um, so my favorite spell in the game period is Break Concentration. I think Break Concentration, like, is one of the most effective just because it is a one-line, um, extremely short incantation ability. It's, uh, you say a person's name, so if I say Peaches, then I say I command the suppressed. 
they are then suppressed for 10 seconds and they can't use abilities for 10 seconds. That can stop a lot of people in their tracks. Um, say they're in mid incant trying to shove you away or freeze you or do something to heal their uh, allies or just any ability that they want to use if they aren't immune to uh, command. Uh, BreakCon is by far one of my favorite spells to use. And Wizard gets it per life unlimited. So if you wanted to take, say, 20 per, li or 20 per life break concentration, you can. Um, my least favorite spell, I would say, is Force Barrier. Force Barrier is, is not, in my opinion, not that good or useful. Force Barrier, for anyone that doesn't know, is a level 1 ability that is per refresh that is... Uh, say you're in a tough situation and a few people are about to rush you, you can say, I should not be harmed, and you make yourself frozen for 30 seconds. Um, if you're going against people that, pl that understand the game very well, uh, that spell only kind of just delays the inevitable death that will happen to you. Just because you are frozen, you can't get yourself out of that state, and you can't uh, do anything while you're frozen, so people can just release you and then kill you. So, yeah, I don't like Force Beer all that much. I would, I would refrain from ever taking it. Unless you, uh, unless you have, like, a team strategy or something, you want to work around it. Then. Um, my favorite thing, things to go up against... Hmm. Uh, I have to think. Not that one. Yeah. I would say my favorite things to go up against would be like things I know I have like a clear advantage, in, like winning a fight. In, I guess you could say like my favorite things to go up against would be. I would say like class wise, probably barbarian, just because barbarians are. Uh, in my opinion, pretty easy to deal with as a wizard. Um, uh, things like wounding will first, it won't affect their blessing its wounds because it just, it takes away the wound. It doesn't deal a wound. You just then, you just lose that limb. Um, even though they're immune to command and subdual, you have a ton of spells that aren't from those schools of magic that can affect them, mainly Icy Blast. So my favorite thing to go up against is probably Barbarians. Um, my least favorite uh, thing to go up against, other enemy bards. <laughs> um, bards, especially when you're going against like a really good bard, are hard to deal with just because they have their songs to adapt to your different schools of magic or just not be affected by your magic in general. Um, but expect a really good bard can dance around a wizard's uh, magic abilities. And so I find like uh, things like um, break concentration can help when used correctly. Um, but when going against the bard, you have to really like with their ability to adapt their songs to their will, whenever they want to sing, you have to be able to jump to different spells to combat uh, the amount of songs that they have. And that's why it's my least favorite, just because it's really hard to deal with. But it's also really fun, because it's challenging. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Because I have some topics that I, I could talk about also that would hopefully prompt more questions. Uh, all right, so one of the first things that I could, uh, I guess, ask you guys would be, do you guys, um, do you guys find, like, I know with people, with some people, like, starting out with one class and then moving to another, um, um, excuse me, before, before you go on, sorry to interrupt, no, you're but, fine. um, what channel, uh, should people be typing questions into? Oh, the wizard uh, chat at the bottom. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, one of the first things I want to see if 
is because people I know with people like starting off as say like a monk or something have trouble like casting spells and amp guard in general. Um, like if people have trouble with that, uh, I'd say the best thing to do with that would be to one practice. Um, when I was first learning the game and spell casting in general, it was hard for me to uh, like most commonly just remember the words that are that are for the incantation. Um, so one of the things I did, especially for the healing cant, I would just say it during the day when I'm at school, uh, while I'm eating lunch. Yeah, yeah, remember, remembering spells is definitely the toughest thing. Um, so I would just, I would get used to just saying it throughout your day. Like, you have it in front of you, and you just say, Sorka spear stab me, smash it or jab with the white light hand descend on me, and you just keep saying it, the incantation over and over in your head. We're not really doing anything. Alright, the best way to memorize spells. Um what I do, at least, I can't really say the best way, but what I do is say I'm in the middle, say right before a battle game, I want to I want to really, like, I really want to get in the mindset of, I want to use this ability. When I was first learning to use abilities, was like, I can't remember the words. So right before the battle game, I would look at the spell sheet, uh, look at my list, look at the different spells that I would want to use, pick like one or two that I know I really want to work on. And I would just say the incant in my head, my power shoves me, my power shoves me, my power shoves me. Just a bunch of times. Um, during the battle game, I know it can be hard to memorize spells, especially when people are rushing you and in the heat of the moment. I would try to, I would try to, uh, when when you know you're gonna get into a situation, just get in the mindset in your head that I will use this ability when this happens, no matter what. My plan when I get into this fight is I will use shove, and just focus on one spell and one ability. And just try and use that as much as you can. A good way to start that would be shove. Because it's one, chargeable. And it's very fast to say. So if you can get in the mindset of when this person comes near me and when I'm in range, I will use this ability. Just no matter what. That's the only thing I'm going to do. This makes a little bit more. Game, like target partner, objective, personal objective. Um, I'm going to go with more thing on the, the casting really quick. Um, another thing I would do is, I know some people have trouble, uh, using abilities and they really want to use abilities. I would say a way it's a lot, it's a lot harsher, but I would say take away the spell balls on your list and run only verbals. It would force you to use more verbal abilities. And if you do fail then at using the abilities, it then just kind of pushes you to then get better at using those abilities so it doesn't keep happening over and over again. Um, and But the main thing is definitely just practice. On your free time, while you're eating food, just pull up the Amp Guard Rules of Play and look over like one or two spells and just keep saying the incant over and over again. When you don't have it in front of you, just keep saying it over and over again until you have it memorized. Um, and the more you play wizard, the better you'll eventually get at using your abilities. Um, what does that look for in a battle? Like target, partner objective, personal objective. Um, what I look for in a battle, uh, battle game objective, uh, I'd say the main thing I look for in a game is priority targets and how to get to the objective with the least amount of resistance. Um, I feel like Wizard is really good at opening the way in battle games. Um, they can pick apart enemies that are in front of you. Say I have a friendly warrior in front of me uh, and there is a, a healer and another warrior in front of us. Uh, Wizard is able to first pick apart the healer that's behind them, and then push through the warrior 
uh, with any ability that they choose in order to essentially get to the objective as fast as possible. Um, wizard in a battle game, uh, I'd say when I play wizard, I would, yeah, I mainly fight for the objective with the least amount of resistance because with wizard and at level six and limited ambulant, I'm able to run, um, I'm able to run and cast at the same time, which means I can rush like the weak side of an enemy line, uh, cast my magic, eat through their weakest link and then rush the objective and essentially pull aggro for my team to then push or just make more openings for my team to push. Um, well, learning spells, what's the best way to learn how they affect each class? Because that's a lot of info. Um, learning spells. So the best way to affect each class when learning spells, I'd say it's mainly experience. Um, going through the rule book, uh, it's definitely, yes, it is a lot of info, especially with the schools of magic. It took me a while to really like memorize the schools of magic when playing. Uh, your, the Reeve at your park will definitely help you out with that. And the more you play, the more you'll be able to know what to use and when to use it. So like monks, for example, monks have, uh, enlightened soul as a trait. 90% of your spells do not work on them. Uh, the only spells that would work on them directly, um, things that would affect them, uh, would be their equipment. Things like Heat Weapon and Pyrotechnics are the two spells that would affect a uh, monk because you aren't targeting them, you're targeting their equipment. That that Those are the only few spells that you have, verbal spells at least, that allow you to uh, get monks off your backs. Um, another thing is spell balls. Uh, spell balls against monks um, will be really good. If they are not level, if they are not level six, then you don't have to be afraid of using it. If they are level six, then the ability, the spell ball that would work through uh, straight up would be phase bolt because it goes through uh, things like enchantments and light and soul. So if they do block phase bolt. They aren't, they can't technically block it. It would break their weapon first because their, uh, the spell wall block will not block it and other things like that. Um, so the, the best way I would say to learn to affect each class is, is mainly experience. The more you play it, the more you'll get better at it. The more you read the rule book, um, the, the easier it is. What are your thoughts on the wizard archetypes? Um, all right, so the wizard archetypes, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, the three archetypes that wizard gets uh, is uh, Battle Mage, uh, Evoker, and Warlock. Uh, I'm going to go from least to favorite. So my least favorite one would be Warlock. Um, Warlock, in my opinion at least, is the... The, the weakest, I wouldn't say it is weak in general, but I would say it is the weakest out of the other two archetypes, mainly because uh, what Warlock does is it doubles the usage of flame and death school abilities, but you can only take abilities from the flame and death schools of magic. So when you're first making the list, if you go from level six abilities to level one, you can get uh, up to max like eight finger of deaths, you can, you can, uh, yeah, you can get max up to, I think around like eight finger of deaths, uh, which is really good. Finger of death is I call upon death to smite thee and target player then dies. That's really good. Um, you would then at level five, get things like, uh, pyrotechnics, steel life. Pyrotechnics allows you to target a player and destroy all of their equipment. You get a bunch of those, but the further down the list you go with, uh, Warlock, six finger deaths. Oh, okay. So the further you go down with it, the harder it is because you don't get a lot of flame and death school verbals. Um, fireballs and lightning bolts, you get a ton of those with Warlock as well. 
But the further down the line you go in spells, you kind of get limited to what you can do. And if you're going up against a level 6 monk, then it could be really good to get with uh, pyrotechnics. But you lose access to a lot of the diversity that wizard gets, and that's kind of one of my reasons why I don't, I don't use it or like it all that much compared to the others. Uh, the next one will be Elemental uh, Evoker. Evoker allows you to uh, make uh, an ability at level 6, Elemental Barrage on charge. Uh, Elemental Barrage allows you to take uh, any amount of spell walls that you can, the amount, max amount of spell walls that you can, and you can throw without having to charge them beforehand. Just the thing is, before you actually throw the ball, Say I have, like, two Ice Balls and a Force Bolt. I will only have to say Ice Ball right before I throw it, and that counts. Whereas, regularly, you have to say uh, the Strength of Ice is mine to evoke. It allows you to become, essentially, a ball turret, which is pretty fun. Um, which So, Evoker makes it so Verbal's purchase can, may only be from the range of Touch yourself, and Elemental Barrage becomes charged times 10. Um, it's my second favorite one, just because Elements Barrage is, is something that is really commonly used because spell balls are very strong. Uh, the other Paragon Wizard, uh, Bob, he uses that. Uh, Bob Ames, he uses that a lot um, because it, it's a really good archetype. If you have the amount of balls and you have a really solid way of storing them and holding them, uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, my favorite archetype is, if you know me, I mainly um, I mainly run Battle Mage because the ability. So what Battle Mage does, it allows you to cast your uh, spells while moving your feet. It gives you unlimited ambulant. Uh, ambulant allows you to cast your abilities while moving your feet. I think that is by far the strongest. Uh, archetype that Wizard has. Uh, Battle Mage, straight from the text, says use of Ambulant becomes unlimited, but you may not purchase uh, enchantments or magic balls. So essentially when you play Battle Mage, you're going all verbals, and, and you are moving your feet while doing it. I think it's the strongest archetype for Wizards because the ability to move around while casting spells puts you ahead of the game in most uh, in most engagements. Um, Say if you want to aggress a person and you are out of their range at the start, you can start casting your ability while outside of their range and you can then finish it while moving into their range. So say I am 30 feet and an enemy bar, uh, I'm 30 feet away from an enemy bar, I can start casting my IC Blast. Uh, I, I would say uh, um, Peaches, for example, you use Peaches. Ambulant, my power makes you frozen. I'm out of his range at first, but then I once I get into that 20 feet, I can finish it and it'll count. Whereas uh, another player that doesn't have an ambulant will have to stand still and start casting their ability uh, when I without without moving while well, as I step into their range. Um. Another thing, too, with Battle Mage is that when people are rushing you, it's very good a as an escape tool. So say an enemy Barbarian uh, is just running straight for you. Uh, I remember there was a moment where uh, Mac Hall, the Barbarian, he rushed me at GE, and I couldn't, I couldn't um, cast a spell without moving my feet, essentially. Otherwise, he would, get at, he would catch on to me very quickly. So one of the things I did was ambulant. Uh, I traveled through the ether so I could teleport while running away at the same time so I can definitely get out of there safely. Uh, as a barbarian is rushing, you can ambulant icy blast in the other direction. That way, as they are rushing, you are casting your spell. You can finish it before they can even touch you. Uh, it's an extremely good escape tool. I really think Battle Mage is all around the best archetype for wizards. So first off, you're not coming soon. What's the number one thing you want to see changed, or what is Wizards' biggest problem? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, all right. 
the biggest thing I would want to see changed in V9 for Wizard, I would say would be, I think, I think uh, the biggest thing for V9 I would want changed is, I would say, I would say Warlock. Uh, this is the only thing I could see really changed. Maybe and also maybe a stronger enchantments for wizard. Um, I'd say change warlock just because you don't see a lot of use out of it. Um, and it's I think it's the weakest out of the out of the three. So I would like to see that change and stronger enchantments just because uh, wizard is the second class that can give pro mag. Uh, Pro Mag is really Pro Mag and Void Touched um, are the only two enchantments really that would you they would uh, use. Uh, they're the most common, at least. Things like Contagion and Vampirism aren't used that much. They're pretty decent, but they're not used really that well. I'd say I would either make new ones or get rid of them and replace them with new, maybe different spells. Also, I would, yeah, that's honestly the only changes I would want for V9 Wizard. Uh, Wizard's biggest problem? Uh, honestly, I don't really see one. I don't I don't really see a problem with wizard. I really think all around it is one of the best and most balanced out of the classes. It has a lot of diversity and you're able to you have you have a lot of diversity in the abilities that you use and the things that you lack in defense compared to other caster classes, you get that back in offense, which is really good. That's why I, I do think Wizard is the most DPS class because the things that it lacks in defense, it gains in offense. So, um, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really see a big problem. If I had to pick out one problem, I guess it would just be uh, Warlock. Um, what is the viability of equipment purchases? Situations where it is most slash least ideal. All right. So, and this could this can tie into uh, Sefton's question. Uh, so, the viability of purchasing equipment. Uh, what I do, I don't really. I kind of I made like a uh, kind of just a meme me uh, joke around sheet where I would get a long sword. But usual times, I would take a short sword if I have to if I don't have a team that I know I can rely on a front line with. Uh most of the time though I do run only a dagger because I do believe that having more at least for me, having more magical abilities can get me out of situations better than a stick can. Um just because if you're doing it effectively, say you run out of all your per refresh abilities all your per life abilities you then have wounding and sho shove and dispel that you can charge that you could charge up you can you can win games and still be really effective with just those two spells unless a monk comes at you at least uh, um uh so I, I would say purchasing equipment equipment purchases i don't really i don't buy a short sword say uh at a kingdom event just because I know I can, I can run and I can use my magic to get out of most situations better than a stick can get me out of situations. Um, where can you see similarities in play styles for other classes? Um, so for similarities in other play styles, uh, Wizard and Bard definitely uh, compare the most purely because they're uh, really aggressive caster of verbal classes. Um, Bard and Wizard have really good uh, melding together just because, just like Wizard can, Bard has the ability to get a bunch of aggressive 
spells that can uh, crowd control other enemies. Uh, things like awe, terror. Um, I think agoraphobia is one. I haven't started leveling bars. So I don't know off the top of my head, but the bard and bard and wizard definitely have the most similarities on aggression. Um, and that's also one of the reasons why I haven't really to level bard all that much, just because it's so similar. I kind of wanted to diversify a little bit, just to like I did. I'm druid six and healer six almost, so I'm gonna do bard last. Um, healer and druid are similar. Yeah, healer and druid are uh, pretty similar because they're both um, pretty pretty heavy on the support side, at least for druid before level six, depending on your play style. Um, druid and healer definitely meld the most and are most similar. Uh, do you usually buy a sword? Why, why not? Uh, I usually don't buy a sword, like I said earlier, just because I usually rely on my magic more than a stick to get me out of like tough situations. Uh, when back to a corner, what do you go to? What what do you go to? Thoughts on class balance, wizard balance against other classes. All right. Uh, when back to in in a corner, what do you go to? Um. When back into a corner, I would usually rely on. I would usually rely on my wounding, uh, break con or icy blast to get me out of situations. Uh, wounding, because if it is a melee uh, attacker, I could use uh, wounding just to take away their leg and get them right out of my face. Um. Uh, icy blast. Because Icy Blast is pretty much one of the strongest of aggressive uh, verbals that you can get because it automatically makes the player frozen. And then I would go to Shatter after that to kill the player if I can. Um, and Break Concentration, that is my usual go-to against other caster classes when back to in corner because, say, a another enemy wizard or bard is trying to aggress me with verbals, I would just use break con, stop them right in the middle of their incantation right before they can finish. Uh, also, but if, a, if a monk is pushing me into a corner, I usually fall back on pyrotechnics. Uh, pyrotechnics is a pretty lengthy spell. It's, uh, yeah, I call upon the element of flame to destroy thy belongings. It's a, it's a pretty long spell uh, to say three times, but it can get the job done get it off and it's natural 50 feet which uh which is extremely short uh, what, what replacement for warlock would you like to see oh wait, uh that's another part of the question thoughts on class balance wizard balance against other classes um so one i think wizard is in a really good state it's very it's a pretty balanced class compared to others um thoughts on class balance in general I would say, I would say class balance in general, I would go with, uh, overall, I think the game is pretty, is pretty balanced in some respect. Uh, most of the time you won't really run into hard counters in Amp Yard. It's mainly just like who you're going up against and if they're pretty good at their class. On the, I would say in my opinion, uh, balance-wise, Barbarian is on the lower end of the scale, and Bard is on the highest uh, on the scale. Just because Bard, against a really good Bard, it's very strong. Uh, and Song of Survival is a very tough spell to get through, um, especially as a wizard. Uh... What replacement for Warlock would you like to see? Um, a replacement for Warlock I would like to see? Uh, I thought about this a little bit. To replace an archetype, I would say... I would say give Wizard something that... 
I would say give Wizards something that can allow them to. Hmm. It's a really good question. Uh, replacement for Warlock. I'd say make an archetype that allows you to essentially be able to play as kind of like more of a frontline wizard or maybe lean more towards the enchantment side of wizard. Because um, I know some people like wizard and can play it, uh, play really well with stick. So something that would encourage that play even more will be pretty strong. Uh, things like Ward Self is a really good enchantment that you can give yourself as Wizard. Essentially just one free bubble on the next negative effect that would affect you. Um, something like that. I think that would be a good replacement for Warlock. Um, next one is how to make a spell sheet. Alright. Uh, so how to make a spell sheet. At least how I make a spell sheet. I'd say... I would say how to make a spell sheet, depending on how you play and how you uh, tackle wizard. Uh, pick things that you know you can use and use effectively. Um, but I will also pick maybe a few spells that you want to learn as well. Uh, the thing about wizard is that you have a lot of diversity. So when building a spell sheet, you want to get things that will work with a certain... Uh, like gimmick or play style, so things that would strengthen your usage of drag below or shatter. So like more ice balls, a lot more icy blasts, so you can use shatter uh, consistently. Uh, things like whole person, lightning bolt, uh, abilities that will uh, that will uh, the words things that will strengthen the use of drag below. So you can get that off more often. You can just get as many kills as possible. Things that uh, put players in substantial. So Astral Intervention and Dimensional Rift. Uh, take a bunch of those. That way you can work off your kill combos. Um, but I will also, you could pick sheets that really diversify. You're spreading yourself around. That way, depending on the situation that you get into, you can really have an answer for almost anything. That's why Wizard has a lot of spells from a, a lot of different schools of magic. Um, so what a sheet that I use a lot, I call it my glass cannon sheet because one, I really like per life abilities and two, they are, they are abilities I know I can use and get off extremely fast. So, uh, things like that I use a lot, like hold person. I take a lot of break concentrations. Uh, I would take my Icy Blast Shatter combo, but those are the only two per refresh abilities I would take. Uh, so essentially, when you're building a spell sheet for Wizard, I'd say one, build one that you know you can, you can use spells effectively. Two, try and make a sheet that revolves around a certain like gimmick or thing, or if you really want to diversify yourself to combat any situation that you get into, you can do that. And I'd say make a spell sheet that that I would say you know you can use all the yeah, those are only two things I lost what I was going to say the, last, uh, the third one. Uh, Alright. Alright. So would you ever see a revert See a revert to fireball to the version of V7 where it costs two and can only carry two balls with the current incant. Fireball will have one of the following effects on the object first struck. A weapon hit uh, is destroyed. The shield hit is subject to shield destroying. Armor hit with armor points is armor destroying. The player hit receives a wounds kill wound to that hit location, changing it to fireball. The flame effects? Destroys or kills anything it touches while moving, even on a roller foot shoot. Uh, that's V7. I never played V7 one. Uh, so I never played V7, so I don't know. I only heard like stories of it. Um, I wouldn't see a revert 
back to it. I think compare with V8 and V7 Fireball, that's a very, that's pretty uh, strong. It's pretty OP, overpowered. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't see like a revert to that now. I think the way Fireball is right now, um, it provides a really good amount of things for what it does. Uh, I got your sheet up now. Oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, thoughts on no kill spell list. Throws, destroy armors. Ooh, okay. I like this question a lot. All right. So, essentially, no kill spell lists are uh, really effective, especially when the game catered towards not killing enemy players. So, uh, the primary example will be Phoenix League, which is coming up this weekend. Cough, cough. Um... I would say uh, no kill spell list when the objective is to say like capture the flag or Phoenix ball when you want to just move the objective to uh, when you just want to move the objective or get to the objective to automatically like get a point when around or score something. Those are really good. The ability to disable players can be way more effective than just killing them because you're Say I take the weapons away from a monk. Depending on the game, that could be way more effective than just killing them. Because that could be, uh, say, uh, it would be 30 seconds on death. It could be an indefinite amount of time if they can't die with no weapons. Or if they don't have anybody that can uh, uh, repair their equipment. Taking away the different tools of a person in a battle game could be really effective. So for example, in Phoenix League, I'm not taking a uh, I'm not taking a kill sheet because the name of the game in Phoenix Ball is to get the objective and score it into the opponent's uh, bucket. So killing a player, uh, so in Phoenix Ball, how it works is that there's six players, uh, you have four people on the field and two people inside of their base. Uh, when a player dies and you have somebody in your base on the bench, they instantly run in. Uh, so instead of killing a player and having another person run in with a four, uh, and that player having a forty-five second death count, it's bet you're better off disabling that person so they don't die. They can't get a new player, and they can't do anything to you. Um. So things like. Uh, that are good in this instance would be uh, Suppress Aura, right? Suppress Aura is a 50-foot spell uh, that when when cast, it's a command the powerless three times. When you get that spell off, uh, that person is then suppressed for 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds that a person can't cast abilities, especially if they are a, a no-weapons bard or no-weapons wizard or anything like that then that's extremely effective. You can run straight through them. That's a 30-second door that you're opening for your team. Uh, things like pyrotechnics is re are really strong because you take away all the person's weapons so they, they can't fight. If they are a warrior and you take away all their weapons, oh, that's, that's so good because then they will, one, either have to take a death and that death count is then uh, 60 seconds or multiply by two in some cases depending on who's reaving. Um, or they have to wait for someone to repair their equipment and, and, or just not do anything, which is really strong. Uh, destroy armor. So destroy armor is, destroy armor is a pretty situational spell. One is situational because depending on... How many people are wearing armor uh, in a game? Uh, it might not be useful. So if one person's wearing armor, I would say even even one or two people wearing armor, uh, it, pr it probably is not that effective. One, because it's a per refresh ability. You would then <clears throat> you would then only be uh, be able to use it two times. But then after that, 
you don't have destroy armor anymore until you get a refresh. Um, so you can only take away mainly like say a chess piece. That's probably the most ideal. And you would take away a chess piece from an armor player twice. And they would probably die twice, but then after that, you don't have an ability after that. I see that as more of a uh, point kind of wasted, um, where if you would spend it on something that wasn't destroying armor, say like a per life ability, or even like, say uh, another per refresh ability, like suppress aura, or another spell wall, um, something like suppress aura, you could, you couldn't even like, with suppress aura, you could purchase suppress aura only one of it. You don't even have to use it. You can use it as a way to back people off of you, which is really strong. Um, the the threat of casting suppress aura without actually finishing it is enough to get other people, other casters away from you. Um, but yeah, no kill spell lists. I think are very strong, especially especially if they cater towards the game that you're playing. It could be really good. Uh, what game mode do you seek for your play style? Um, for my play style, uh, what game modes do I seek for my play style? I would say game modes that really uh, cater towards fast-paced, uh, objective-based games. Uh, or fast-paced uh, kill games. So things like Capture the Flag, Team Deathmatch are things that uh, I really, I thrive in personally, uh, especially with Battle Mage Wizard, because I'm able to run around in a Team Deathmatch game, run around, uh, wipe, out enemy, uh, wipe out enemies that I see, create openings for my team. Uh, things like Capture the Flag, where a no-kill spell list really thrives, too. I could, say, cast Suppress Aura, Ambulant, uh, and run on the side through their weak link. I don't even have to, say, kill them. I could just take them out of the game while moving my feet, casting spells as people chase after me. Uh, uh, eh. and, and just, like, your your ability to move and do a lot of DPS in a short amount of time is where I think Wizard thrives, and those are the type of games that I really think I do really well in. Fast paced games, uh, objective based, or thing that or games that like the objective is to just kill people. Also, um, do you feel the introduction of personal invulnerability last insubstantial? As hurt casters, verbal spell functionality. Um, I don't really think so. If anything, it helps bring more balance into into the game. Uh, if there weren't personal vulnerabilities or insubstantial things, then uh. Uh, Umir, you're not muted. That's all fine. Um, I would I would say things of uh, players that can get uh, in vulnerabilities or insubstantial abilities, if anything, brings the into the game more balance, because if other uh, casters or classes didn't have those escape tools or tools to shield them the casters would have way more free reign than they already do now. Um, so things like insubstantial uh, abilities, that really helps assassins, that helps other casters get out of tough situations um, when being cast on. I know one of my go-to escape things is when, say, an enemy is going to cast, like, extension icy blast, and I didn't see it in time, and I'm going to get hit with it, I can do swift... Uh, teleport and get myself right out of that. Uh, right out of that instance. Uh, if the ability to have escapes allows for a lot more diversity in the game, 
And the thing is, casters already have, especially Wizard, already have a lot of tools for those personal vulnerabilities or es escapes. So things like Wizard has chargeable dispel magic. Um, the only thing that really counters dispel magic is slide of mind. Um, other than that, any enchantment that you have is essentially gone when dispel magic is there. Uh, but then you can just keep putting in, putting on more enchantments as they charge. Uh, personal vulnerabilities like monks and like soul is really good, but wizard still has answers for that. Uh, with pyrotechnicity weapon. Um, the thing with like bard songs, uh, they're they're really they're really good, but if you really know if you know the game really well and you can really like dance with the bard and their song change and really adapt your uh, play style and what you're doing while they're changing songs, it's still you're still able to do it, like and still be able to defend yourself. So I think having invulnerabilities and substantial abilities. It doesn't really hurt. It brings a lot more diversity into the game. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? I know, uh... Well, one of the things I also wanted to say was, uh... I would say like um, positioning uh, for casters and wizards are a really good thing. Uh, with my play style, I play a lot on the, I play a lot of uh, mid to front line wizard. Um, I think that's where wizard thrives the most. And that's why positioning is a lot, it was very important because depending on where you are, uh, you can either do a lot of damage or you can die really fast. Um, positioning is one of the things that get players kill the most in amp guard um but if you're able to actively think about your positioning and where you place yourself in any game you can you can win battle games on positioning um positioning is one of the most important things especially when playing any caster class because you su are such high priority targets um do you write your spell list from level one to level six or level six one more uh so i when i was first doing it I would do one to six. Uh, I don't know why. Like at that time, like my like my head just like worked in a different way. I guess when making spell lists, but now I go from level one to six, and I just I just think about what I'm gonna just drop down uh, all the time, just because I find it a little bit easier to do it uh, from levels uh, six to one because I don't take a lot of big per refresh spells and I try and save my points for things later on. Um, but yeah, working your way up from one to six also works too. What made you want to pursue Paragon Wizard as opposed to any other class? Um, all right. So one of my things, uh, just in general, like about me, I really like magic. When I first played Amped Guard, uh, like my first, like one or two fields, I played Wizard. Um, but at first, just like, uh, kind of like most most people, um, I didn't catch on to it quickly, and I was like, man, this is really hard and complicated. So then I moved on to Assassin. Uh, after I finished Assassin, I said, all right, or I didn't even finish Assassin at the time. I, uh, I really wanted to, once I had a really better understanding of the game, especially, I think it was after my first, uh, match of Phoenix League two years ago, I decided to play, uh, a wizard just cause I really wanted to like, now that I have a better understanding and I saw the strength of magic in Amp Guard in general, I, uh. I wanted to pursue wizard. So uh I pursued wizard, played it a lot. After my first Phoenix League of Wizard, that which was an accident, which is a pretty funny story. I only played it at level two. Um I decided and I and I really saw like the strength of that wizard could get, and I just got really hyped for 
for it to just keep getting credits in it and just keep leveling it and playing it. Because I saw, especially once I hit, especially once I hit level four, I really saw like the potential that Wizard can get by like seeing what I get at level four and then reading on onward. Um, it, it just made me get really excited for and I wanted to master it after that. Um, yeah. Opposed to when but, uh, Pursuit Paragon Wizard as opposed to any other classes. I, in video games, when I play them, I really like going uh, DPS. Uh, so Wizard, because it does the most DPS out of most of the classes in the game, uh, it made me want to pursue Paragon Wizard over uh, other classes. I don't know what I'm going to Paragon next, but currently nothing has caught caught on to me as much as Wizard has, just because I really like the the, the output you can put uh, at output as a Wizard. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, I have one. I have one more thing I wanted to say uh, uh, that I have on my my little piece of paper that I have in front of me. Um, something because how cool is Bard? Bard's pretty dope, I guess. You know, you could say not as dope as Wizard, but it's still cool. <laughs> um, one of the things I want, I do want to say. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I do want to say for. Uh, if you're if you're learning wizard right now and you have a trouble if you have a hard time uh casting uh, one of the things that i think is good now to start and to do in general would be uh i call it like like uh it's like a spellball insta cast type thing so say you have your say your lightning bolt charge right uh it's in your hand about to throw it uh, I would say, uh, one of the things that I do right now is I have my spellball charged. How spellballs work is when you have your spellball charged, um, if you start casting a spell, that spellball is then discharged, right? So one of the things I do is, uh, if, because most people, especially at our field, um, uh, Elijah, he's the main person that does this, is, uh, he has a shield and he would block it. Uh, he, he would drop his shield in front of him and just let go of it, and that would eat the spell ball, stop it right in his tracks. So, and then he would then rush me afterwards because I threw a spell ball and I don't have anything right there. So one of the things I do is as soon as I throw the spell ball and it leaves my hand, I immediately start casting another spell. So I have my lightning bolt. And as soon as it leaves my hands, it's not discharged. It's in, it's in motion, about to hit the target. Say the person dodges it or shield drops it. Um, you can then start casting, say, shove. Because so as soon as this leaves my hands, I can just say my power shoves me, my power shoves me, my power shoves me. If that person then starts rushing, you already have your spell pretty much finished by the time they get to you, and then they have to move back 20 feet. You can then start casting another spell ball, and then you can do the process right over again. I think I think that's a really good way to start getting used to casting spells. And just a good strategy in general for when you use uh, spell balls and all around sheets. Um, what do you look for in prospective apprentices? How about prospective paragons? All right, so right now I have I have four apprentices. Um, I'm trying to at the moment I haven't done too much in that that in that department just because school. but as soon as like I have a solid amount of free time, I have things planned that I want to start. Uh what I look for in prospective apprentices, I want it to first you have to have like a passion for the class. Like if you just want the apprenticeship just for the like apprenticeship and like like to like uh like learn wizard i'd say like i can i can do that i can i could teach you wizard without you having to do it um but like i like to see like passion 
in the class, like people that are like passionate and really like, like and really want to pursue wizard. So people like uh, like Mirren and uh, my other uh, apprentice right now, um, Kristen in Canada. Uh, they're they both of them are very passionate about wizard, and that gets me super hyped that they are. And I plan on doing more with you guys as soon as the semester ends. Um, but yeah, prospective apprentices, they need to have like a certain passion for the class. So we feed off of each other. Like if you, if you, if I see that you're hyped, that makes me hyped. And then I get just more hyped from your hype. And it's just a hype circle. And it just keeps going up from there. Um, about prospective paragons. Um, so for, from prospective paragon wizards, I would say, uh, pers from perspective, Paragon uh, wizards, people that can one play all the archetypes, even if you aren't the best or even like like extremely god tier effective at all of them. Uh, people that could play uh, all the ar archetypes of wizard. Uh, people that can teach the class effectively and people that are generally like excited uh about it i would say is a perspective pers what makes a paragon wizard um and that's kind of just like paragon in general too people who are really effective at the class but can also teach and be like a nice role model or thing for people uh when chasing after that 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 dank silver Uh, <laughs> how to level wizard take credits i think that answers your question i don't know um like i guess i don't know like how to level it what do you mean i mean as you gain levels how do you make oneself more effective at level levels make yourself more effective at level levels. Oh, okay um how to make yourself so i mean as you gain levels how do you make yourself effective at lower levels uh so going from starting at level one uh that's like you're just trying it out you're trying to get the feeling for it when you hit level two i really do think level two is when you can go extremely effective in the wizard right um i always say like i always say like level two wizard is phoenix league level wizard um it is uh because you get a lot of you get abilities you get abilities from for things that can affect all classes one you get the best ability in the game my favorite one at least uh break concentration uh, two, you get heat. Uh, you can you can get uh, different spell balls, uh, entangle, suppression, and uh, force. Those three. But then you also can get uh, different abilities that can put people in the states uh, level two, and that's when you can really start uh, diversifying yourself and your spell sheets. Uh, at level three, that's when you get your first kill combo. That's when you things really start to hit the fan for wizard. Um, you're able to effectively just kill people as wizard. Um, hello, and then at level four, uh, that's when you get both your kill, uh, all your kill combos, and essentially become what wizard is, which is a turn.
Hey, bro. Hey. To record it. I essentially went through my entire list of things that I also want to say. Some really helpful questions, right? How would you make? How would I make Warlock good? Um, I have a spell somewhere. I don't know. I think it's in my other book. Um, but how I would make the Warlock good? Uh, I, I would. would. I take the I wouldn't take any other archetype on top of that. So I wouldn't do like warlock battle mage. I'd really go with you should be able to have uh the amount of FODs, pyrotechnics, heat weapons. Uh, make sure you have the right amount of spell balls that you can for it. And I would play it more as a I wouldn't go for targets that you can't kill. Don't put yourself in positions that you can't get out of because you can't really deal with certain things um, as Warlock. Because, yes, you can just straight up kill someone with uh, with your FODs, but once you run out of FODs and pyrotechnics and uh, all those abilities, you're essentially you're done with your big spells. So I would hold on to those as much as I can. You can use it a lot more sparingly just because you have so many. But I definitely would think before you use them. Just don't like blow your entire uh, bag of tricks uh, right off the bat. Um, once you're, I would say once you're done, if the game goes long enough that you're done with your warlock uh, big uh, attack abilities, definitely work off mainly your uh, your drag below your uh hope uh your lightning bolts and your fireballs because you can still charge drag below which is really strong and you can get a lot of steel lives which makes it so you can recharge your drag below as soon as you get that kill so with warlock uh like the steel lives the the steel lives the lightning bolts the fireballs the drag below those are the main things you'll be working with as soon as you're done blowing off your big stuff. Yes, you can only charge things when you are out of use. So say if I take two uh, drag blows, I have to use both of them before I can charge it. And I can only charge the one. I can't charge both. Um, be a wizard. Overall, wizard is... Wizard can be a pretty difficult class to get in the swing of things, but once you really start to understand the class and practice more with it, uh, it's very, it's very effective. I got instant. Uh, only played the class four times. Uh, if you're level five, you only only play a few times. I'd focus if you're if you're not really all that good with verbal spells, then I would say practice those. But if you're level 5, level 5 is extremely strong. Um, I'd focus on utilizing your... Uh, probably go with one kill combo and work off your per-life abilities and a few uh, spell balls. Um, one ki kill combo mainly because um, with the amount of magic that you do have at level 5, the amount of credits, or the amount of uh, uh, skill eh, points that you have of magic, you can really dumb that down to other lower level things and get a lot of uh, magics at lower level, which are really effective. Like BritCon. I would say like on my BritCon sheet, like my... the glass cannon sheet that I gave to uh, Blackjack earlier i think i have three on that but on my phoenix league uh sheet i have i have like four uh just one extra one just because BritCon, I, I would use that a lot so things like BritCon, 
I don't use a lot of points at level six. Um, just because I dumb it down for lower things like that. Um, but at level five, you can definitely uh, dumb down some points for bigger things. Probably focus on those. Just because at level five, you get a lot of per refresh abilities. And I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of per refresh abilities. Just because you can get a lot more uses with per life. Um, question from Saraha. How do I become the ultimate plus ultra? All right. So this is my trade secret. I've been holding on to it until today. Um, so to become the ultimate plus ultra, one needs to first get up every day at 6 a.m. Uh, listen to My Hero Academia you say, uh, as you get ready in the morning. And you need to walk out your door with the most positive smile on the planet. And always be hyped about everything that you do. That's how you become the ultimate plus ultra. It takes a little bit. But if you can do that for a solid year, you'd be the ultimate plus ultra. Can you spell your name wrong? Yes, also that. <laughs> how to make spell balls? Um, how I make spell balls? Uh, I take a lot of the stress balls from the Fredonia campus, and I then get cloth, and then I put a hair tie on it, and that's spell ball. Sit right there. I know, uh, I know Balbane's the other Paragon Wizard in the Golden Vale. He, I think he makes his out of rubber bands. Uh, <clears throat> I can confirm he does, he gets like a $1 piece of cloth, um, from Walmart. You can find them in the craft section. And then he gets a, he gets a literal just fistful of rubber bands and then shoves that in the cloth, wraps it real tight, and then ties it off with another rubber band. Yeah. Yeah, that's really effective. And his uh, his have, like, a lot of weight, like, a good enough weight to it to uh, to really, like, when you get hit with it, you know you got hit with it. What kind of soup is best for Paragons? Uh, I personally like Kraft ABC Soup. It's really good. Not a child thing. It's not only for kids. ABC soup is life. <laughs> Me. <laughs> soup weight. <laughs> Wizard Towers? Yes or no? What do you mean? I'm gonna have some me. <laughs> Construct a tower. What is a tower? What do you mean by tower? Wait. I mean like, like RP-wise? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't have to have a tower. Um, like, I... Like, I don't really... Like, Raylan doesn't really work out of a tower. He, he has, like... Kind of just like a... Like a little base of operations. Uh, it's like a little nice, like, hut. It has a basement. Where all the things happen. And it's pretty big. Uh, but you don't need to the only if anything towers make you you know a target you know make you you don't want to stand out too much like you are the best if you are a wizard but you don't want to like you know have people coming to kill you and take your stuff <sighs> i 
Yeah. Uh, does anybody have, else have any other questions for Wizward? And tell me if you want to like, if you want me to elaborate on more things, or you have any other things I didn't like clear up completely. Uh, am I ready for Saturday? I am so ready for Saturday. Like, I cannot wait because I'm, I'm I'm just cranking out so much schoolwork right now. Um, so I can go into Saturday without having to worry about like schoolwork on like Monday or Tuesday because I plan on just like only thinking about Phoenix League. You think wizards are a higher count of assassins? Yes. Um, you get two abilities that hard stop assassins. Uh, Dimensional Rift, which kills straight up insubstantial players. And uh, Planar Grounding. Uh, Planar Grounding is a per life spell. Uh, the incant is my power closes the ether to thee. And that player, if they are, are insubstantial, they get rips. They rip. Eh, they get ripped out of insubstantial status for thirty seconds, and they cannot then go insubstantial uh, for for thirty seconds. So it takes them out of insub, and they can't go back at the insub for thirty seconds. Um, I do think a uh, wizard hard counters assassin, especially if you make a uh, a sheet that caters towards that. Yeah, planar grounding is very very strong against assassins. It takes away literally all their all their stuff. Uh, Parions need to like two. Well, no, never mind. Parions don't need to like soup. Cause I don't think Ben likes soup all that much. So you don't have to, but you still have to eat it. It's the only requirement. Well, I don't know. Because then if you don't like the soup, you're not really accepting the Paragon energy needed to get it, need, that you would get from eating the soup and enjoying it, you know? Like, if you're, not, if you're not really feeling the soup and you're not liking the soup, you can't really appreciate the soup. So you can't appreciate the power that it gives you. Yeah. So what Dash say, you need to love it. <laughs> uh, but if that is it if nobody else has any other questions we could end it right there so I'm really hungry you're welcome. Nice, uh, helpful. Uh, I'm glad Reynald was able to help. I am Reynald. Was it solid? Okay, thanks. <laughs> you guys can come in the voice chat now if it's over so I can hear your faces. I mean, I never, I didn't really mute myself in discord i guess yeah you mean your, uh, your external one i yeah. had to i had to go to, to joanne's and i didn't think you wanted to hear the old ladies arguing about tool that's funny <laughs> i mean i could have done with some old ladies arguing about tool did you say here are faces yes okay yeah because yeah, that oh. sound is where it comes from your face also uh just so you know uh, paragons have extra senses. It's true. We we get it. We get we get it by eating soup. Uh, so we can hear light. Yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> I noticed that after Yule. Yeah. How does a wizard yeah. do a video outro? Uh, I don't know. By killing a man. Oh yeah, that's true too. Did Matt do a cool video out show last time? I don't know. I don't know.
And for everybody that's in this chat that's currently doing the Kingdom Roleplay, it's about to start in nine minutes, just so you guys know. Are we know. supposed to fill something out to what park we're in, et cetera, et cetera, for this? Um, I, I posted something about that in 